What a game that was uh, for Towson. that we just saw uh, the Tigers taking down Hopkins to kick off that 2019 season. One of the stars of that game, Brendan Sunday, joins us now here on our Towson Watch Party. Brendan, that was a good one for you, man. What was it, six goals to assist to kick off the year? Yeah, I think so. If uh, memory serves correct, I mean, it's only been a, a, a three short years. But, uh, yeah, no, it was an awesome game, awesome atmosphere to kick off that season. What was it that clicked in that game and that year for you? Because uh, you went from 17 goals in 2018 to jumping to nearly 50 in 2019. What was it about that 2019 season for you? Yeah, I think it was just, uh, you know, clarity within the offense, um, you know, for I think the offense as a whole, but specifically me. Um, the year prior, I was bouncing back and forth between, you know, playing midfield and attack. Um, you know, we had some different lineup changes throughout the year. And, you know, going into that 2019 season, um, you know, it was a pretty much clear cut. Hey, you're starting at attack uh, throughout fall. You know, the offense was kind of, you know, running through me. Um, you know, so I think it was, you know, just that, you know, being able to be in that specific uh, position and, uh, you know, just find some success. We had some great, you know, guys in the offense with me and, you know, we had a pretty big advantage at the, the face off X every game. So uh, a lot of possessions and a lot of opportunity. Yeah. Alex Woodall being on your side is always a good thing. It's always a good thing. Yep. <laughs> He's one of the best. <laughs> Uh, we've talked to Coach Natalin and uh, Kobe Smith already about that Hopkins rivalry because there's something special about Towson and Hopkins when you guys get together. What is it for you that kind of defines playing Hopkins when you got that black and gold jersey on? Yeah, there's just uh, there's just some extra juice to it every time we play them. Uh, you know, they're, they're our cross town rivals. You know, they're 10 minutes down the road, um, and you know, there's just a history to it. Um, you know, you know, Towson's had its up and downs. Um, you know, but you know when we were there. And, you know, we were really competitive with them. And uh, I think we were basically splitting, you know, whoever was the home team was winning. Um, you know, and I think there's something to be said for that. So um, it's just easy to get up for a game like that. You know, start of the season, you know, week one, you're already jittery, ready to go. And, you know, having to beat your crosstown rival just makes it that much sweeter and, uh, you know, that much more you know, pumped up. If memory serves, serves me correct, was that the first game you guys wore the porthole throwback uniforms? Yeah, yep. Yeah, so that was uh it was actually rolled out. So um I was out there doing some like extra shooting or whatever after one of the practices and I saw uh Zach Goodrich, he was like doing like a little like photo op. Um and I got a little sneak peek of that and I think that kinda you know also juiced the guys up a little bit too. It was something about those jerseys. We played pretty well on them, so yeah, I mean, that was the, honestly as good as you guys played during the year. The jerseys became as much of the story on social media and stuff as you guys did in terms of wins. What was the feeling like? Like, when did you guys first see those jerseys? Was it like the day before or the week before? What, when did you guys first see them? Yeah, so that was the that was the week of that game. Uh, and I actually think they ended up Hopkins had it planned for later in their season too. I think they, you know, bumped theirs up too to do like a complete throwback game. So uh no, it's awesome. I mean, I think you could even see it now. I think a lot of club programs, you know, a lot of other, you know, programs uh, at the collegiate level are also doing the, the Fort Hall mesh. And you know, I think the PLL just did a little throwback too um this year. So it's uh it's definitely gained some ground. So Towson trendsetters that yeah. that's, that's really what it's all about the 2019 <laughs> team so. and yeah. you're you're right about the Hopkins thing because I had gotten a tip from somebody saying that hey we were going to do these special jerseys and they had the matching helmets that had the alternating thing going on and that the Hopkins like no 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 we found out Towson's going to do them now we need to do them always falling on our footsteps <laughs> <laughs> Overall, that 2019 season was was a big one. Uh, already as part of this watch party, we showed people the, the win over number one Loyola. Take me back to that night, that Wednesday night, when you guys took down the, the Greyhound. Yeah, just another, you know, crosstown rival. Um, you know, them being number one, uh, just added more fuel to our fire, you know, because we obviously felt like we were the best team in the, in the country at that time. And, you know, the, the midweek game, too, you know, all eyes on us. I don't think there was many games played that night. Um, you know, you guys covering it. You know, it was uh, it was a pretty electric atmosphere. Um, you know, I remember there was a few thousand people in the stands. Um, you know, going up against Pat Hunter and those guys, it's uh, it's never easy. Um, and, you know, Coach Toomey's a, an unbelievable coach. Um, you know, so, you know, you always know you're going to get their best. Um, you know, in a similar situation, right? You know, we've been more competitive, you know, over the past few years with, with clubs like that. And, uh, you know, it was a great way just to, you know, put us on display, um, you know, on a national scale and, you know, get a huge win for the program.
So that year was so big for you guys. You have uh, the win over Hopkins, which kind of stamped, cemented you guys as being a team like, hey, we're to be reckoned with. It, you followed it up by beating Loyola. You ended up being the number one team in the country for a short time. Uh, you guys end up winning the CAA title. You host a playoff game. Like five, ten years down the road, if you're talking to somebody about that season, what are the stories that, you, that stand out to you that you feel like you're going to be telling down the road about that year? Yeah, you know, I think we, we kind of hit on both of them. I, I, I definitely think, you know, the Hawkins and Loyola one will definitely be, you know, a sweet story. But, um, you know, the thing for me is just being with that group of guys. It was a special group of guys. Um, you know, we had some, you know, tough, you know, tough time the year prior, um, you know, to put it lightly. And I think the way that we just rebounded um, and the way that we kind of stuck together as a group, uh, that team was like far and away, you know, the most, you know, connected group I've ever been a part of. Um, and, you know, I think just, you know, little stories within that of just like, you know, traveling on the bus, you know, things of that nature, um, you know, just eating meals together, just you know, silly things like that, that don't seem like a big thing to, you know, maybe someone on the outside, but mean a lot to, you know, all, all the guys in the team. So I think it's just the little things like that, that all, you know, I'll always remember. All right, so give me your favorite game. Doesn't he have to be from that year? Favorite game of your college career at Towson? Oh, jeez. I think it's, I got to go 2017 uh, quarterfinal against Syracuse at Delaware. That was, uh, <laughs> that was a different uh, – oh, that kind of put us back on the map, first of all, going back to the Final Four since uh, the first one since 2001. I think it really just put us back on the map. And that was probably the best atmosphere I've ever been a part of. Uh, we caught, we were the early game, so we ended up catching uh, some U Albany Maryland fans coming in at the end. And uh, obviously, at the time, everyone thought it was a big upset, not us. But, uh, <laughs> you know, it, that was an awesome game uh, to be a part of. Yeah, and I, I have to think that, too, probably had to help like you and some of the guys that had been a part of that team in 2019, because like you guys had been there, like the, all the right. stuff, the national recognition, whatever, like not phasing you. Cause you had been on the biggest stage of the cross in the final four, a couple of years before. Right. Exactly. Um, you know, we kind of just like, started blocking out the noise. I mean, we try not to leave, like listen to that stuff pre, you know, pregame anyway. I mean, it's always hard to, you know, block stuff out, but we did our best to kind of do that. So yeah, you know, we were no strangers, you know, to big games, you know, the year prior to that, we beat Denver, you know, who was coming off the national championship. That was my freshman year in 2016. So, uh, you know, definitely no stranger to the big stage. Well, uh, speaking of 2017, you planned this perfectly because we're going to send people to the 2017 uh, game that you guys took down uh, Hopkins there at Johnny Unitas. Uh, Brendan, we really appreciate you being part of our watch party. Uh, thanks for taking a little trip down memory lane. We appreciate the time. No, I appreciate you guys having me.